You can't see it, but it's there. Invisible pollution being generated by our daily activities. What we're talking about here is a global scale problem. From excessive noise in our cities to tiny particles of plastic. It's in soil, it's getting into Arctic sea ice. Now, scientists and entrepreneurs like space environmentalist Mora Baja are creating technologies to stem the tide of pollution. We've underestimated just how much digital technology can do. And to ensure a cleaner future, not just here on Earth, but beyond. There's a space environmentalist living inside of everybody, and so it's my job to tease that out. Join me as I meet the minds behind the technology that could help in the fight against invisible pollution. I'm Christy Lou Stout, and this is Tech for Good. Space has long captivated the human imagination. And here at the California Science Center, there are a number of objects that have made their way into space and returned back home to Earth. But that's not usually the case. Now let's head over to Austin, Texas, where he met with one so-called space environmentalist who is on a mission to foster a sense of stewardship by tracking a human-made problem. Every time you look at the sky, it's kind of like a time capsule. I think the thing that is amazing to me is just thinking about the light that I'm seeing left that star millions of years ago. Space is very populated. Space is not empty. The night sky contains more than just stars. My name is Mor Baja. I'm an associate professor of aerospace engineering and engineering mechanics at the University of Texas at Austin. The Soviet Union launched Sputnik in 1957. That's the first thing that humanity put into orbit. Now it's like 2022 and we're tracking like 50,000 things ranging in size from a cell phone all the way to the space station in different orbits serving multiple purposes. Out of this 50,000 that I mentioned, only about 5,000 are the things that are working and 45,000 are the junk. The thing is, when we put satellites into these orbits, at some point they run out of fuel, they stop working. And so the eventual outcome for everything that works is for it to become junk. Most of the stuff that we put up there, when it dies, it's going at like seven times the speed of a bullet. As long as we continue to behave as we are, which is not globally coordinating who's launching what, when, and how, eventually people are going to die as a consequence of all the space garbage. That will happen. One way in which this really hits home for people is if you've ever seen the movie Gravity, right? It's like you have Sandra Bullock, she's out on a spacewalk, out at the edge of this robotic arm attached to the space station. And then out of nowhere, this dead satellite hurling at several times the speed of a bullet comes crashing into the space station. This cascading effect happens. One thing starts bumping into the next, destroying all objects, and they just become a cloud of space debris. Houston, I've lost visual, Dr. Stone. Space isn't something that's like really way, way out there. Where we put satellites can be very close to where you're located. Astrograph is a program I developed to track human-made objects in Earth orbit, both dead and alive. Think of it as this database that can bring in all sorts of information from anywhere. Things that are orange or, or yellow are things that are working. Pink are things that we know that it's something human made, but we don't know exactly what category it is, whether it's a fragment, intact rocket body or something like that. The cyan dots are like things that are like intact but dead objects. So eventually with Astrograph, we want to develop this kind of ways for space where everybody who has a vested interest in space can participate, see what the current traffic patterns are, and actually contribute uh, information to that as well. In my own work, I feel called to serve this purpose of being a space environmentalist and all that other stuff, and I need to train myself so that I can have the largest capacity possible. And so that means eating a certain way, it means going out for runs to help me manage my anxiety and stress. I'm interacting with the rest of the universe to kind of serve my soul's purpose. When it comes to today's youth, I'm really excited 
because they're going to see incredible advancements in regards to space exploration in their lifetimes. So all these kids are Gold Star family, children, so the common thread amongst them is that they've lost at least one parent to violence and conflict. So they're orphans in, in a sense. And so that is very moving to me. I mean, I'm hoping to motivate and encourage them to really understand and see that interconnectedness between how we're behaving in space and what we've done in land, air, and ocean. Basically bring the environmentalists out of them. Okay, who's heard of Albert Einstein? I feel that as adults, it's very easy to be cynical. When we look at what's happening around the globe, it's just a lot of bad news. And I think that's the message that I want to get across to our youth is to say, look, whatever evidence that, that is being presented to you that is telling you that it's like game over and there's nothing you can do, don't believe that. Because the thing is, there's lots that each of us can do. Their decisions will dictate kind of how that goes. Does humanity end as a species or do we continue to thrive?